Hi everybody, happy Sunday, we're glad you're here. We are gonna tell you all the DIY, the do-it-yourself for hiking the Samira Gorge on the island of Crete in Greece. We're Chris and Steve, an early retired couple who sold everything to travel the world full time. We share our nomad life, hikes, and vegan eats. Grab our book, two carry-ons and a plan on Amazon and follow us on social. Subscribe to catch our video every Sunday. So where are we? We're in Hania, uh, uh, Crete in Greece, enjoying this beautiful island. Uh, the weather has been great, although we had some really kind of nasty, cloudy weather when we first started here for the first few days. Um, but we had a chance to hike this Maria Gorge. It was a fantastic day, a long day. Uh, but Chris, why don't you start out by telling us what is the Samari Gorge? So I've done a lot of hikes in this world, and this is one that was on my checklist. It is an, the Samari Gorge is the long, the longest gorge in Europe, and it is a UNESCO World Heritage Biosphere site. So we thought that hiking the, the gorge itself is about 16 kilometers long. The hike itself is 13 kilometers long. The gorge is what, 4,000 feet tall, so 1,230 meters. And the width is 150 meters or about 500 feet wide. And it narrows down to just 10 feet or three meters wide. So we thought this was an absolute opportunity to do an UNESCO, you know, check an UNESCO site off our list and hike the, hike the gorge. It's actually denoted on an, as an UNESCO site because of all its endemic and endangered species. There's over 200 endemic species just inside the gorge, including the, the wild goat, the Greek goat, and vultures. So how about that? But anyway, we decided we want to do this, this hike and, um, and explore, explore some of the White Mountains. So um, yeah. what'd you think of the hike? I thought it was great. It was a, a challenging hike. Uh, because you start off at the top and then you hike down and down and down and down and a little bit up and then and down, down and, and down, down and down and down. And down. down. Yeah, this, uh, is, this hike is no joke. I mean, even though it's all downhill, it is very strenuous and very hard. Um, Grand Canyon-like hard. If you've, if you've hiked to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, very similar sort hard. of hardness to that. Um, and even though it's not that long, you probably hike... 16 kilometers total in the day so it's eight or nine miles it's really not long but because of the terrain it is quite difficult yeah this so, is one uh definitely wear your your best hiking shoes and poles are definitely an advantage for you especially if you're going down for balancing and taking the, the weight off your knees uh, but um, tell us about different the, the rocks Oh my God. So if you're a rock hound, this would be the hike for you. So um, all of my friends who know the names of rocks, so you've got scree, gravel, talus, boulders, you get them all on this hike. <laughs> so there is scree, which is you know, little medium sized rocks. There's gravel, which is small rocks. There's boulders that you have to navigate in between. Every type of rock you can probably ever imagine is on this trail, and that's all that's on this trail. There's nothing smooth, there's nothing flat. There are some the roots from trees, but it is all rock all the time. Yeah, and just to kind of to reiterate that you're, you're just not walking on flat surfaces. You're constantly having to look down to see where your feet are going next because of all the different uneven surfaces and all the different rocks. Yeah, think cobblestones. Think cobblestone roads. Walking. Yeah. 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 So what else did we bring in our, in our backpacks? Yeah, so it, it was a long day. You know, we started uh, off on the bus at 7.45 in the morning and didn't get home until 9.30 at night. And we're going to tell um, you all the logistics. Um, Hang on. We're going to tell you exactly <laughs> how to do it all after we tell you a little bit more about the hikes. Sorry about definitely, that. definitely bring food and, and snacks with you because there's no place except at the very beginning, at the very end uh, for, for food. Uh, water though, you don't have to bring a lot of water with you because there's a lot of uh, water available uh, on the, the route, on the hike to refill your water bottles, right. which is a big plus. Right. Um, and we do, we do want to note that we did this hike in the middle of October that was about, uh, we started off as probably 55 degrees and went up to maybe 70 while we we're there. So what, um, 15 degrees to 20 degrees Celsius, somewhere along in there. And it was really comfortable the entire hike. The beginning of it was very windy and cold. We actually needed jackets to get started, but quickly shed those jackets once we got about down the canyon, about 100 yards or so. So 
Um, but you probably, in the summertime, it won't be like that, but it certainly was like that in October. And when's the, when's the creek or the hike open? Yeah, it's only open from May through October, and, and they don't tell you exactly when. The, the dates aren't, are, you know, the beginning of any date, so definitely make sure you, uh, you check the, the website. And we were checking the website every day because of the rains, and they actually didn't announce that it was going to be open on the Thursday that we hiked it until Wednesday at 4 p.m. So... Uh, if you're anticipating rough weather or difficult weather, it may be hard to plan when you're actually going to go. But if it's a, if you're in the season where the weather's pretty consistent, you might be able to plan a little bit longer. Okay, so um, what was the what was the hike like? The first part of the hike? It was uh, it was straight down. Well, you know, not straight down. I mean, they called it they called it stairs and switchbacks, but it was like just it was just at a, at a pretty steep steep angle. In a number of places, there were you know hand rails to just kind of, you know, hold on to as you're, as you're heading down? I would say the first hundred yards or um, a hundred meters, so a thousand feet or so, were the most difficult of the hike. It was uh, very large steps down, very uh, wobbly surfaces, very scree-like and um, very technical almost. I almost felt like I was rock picking with my pole. After you get through that first hundred meters, hundred yards, um, it, it's not as difficult, but it, or not as technical, but it still is difficult. So um, I was watching my step counter, my fit, my um, Garmin, and it wasn't until about I had taken ten thousand steps. So for me, that's around four miles. For you, I mean, that's obviously not a bear a, a barometer that measures out for a lot of people. But at ten thousand steps was when we finally got down to the bottom, where yeah. we actually kind of yeah. s- it was about a, out. a third of the hike was yeah. just getting down the side of the mountain uh, into the gorge. Yeah, I mean, I did. I took 35,000 steps for the day, so a third of it was just going down. Okay, uh, while going down, what we there was a couple of things that we noticed that we really want to give uh, credit to the Greek National Park Service. In particular, they're very concerned about fire in the canyon, and all, it was actually kind of, kind of fun, because <laughs> all throughout you see these like sheds for the fire department, but then just randomly next to a tree would be a fire hydrant and next to another rock would be a fire hydrant and then a boulder would be a fire hydrant or not a fire hydrant, a extinguisher, a fire, a fire extinguisher. extinguisher. And they were just kind of like, we felt like they were randomly placed throughout the forest. There was, there was like a fire hydrant because there was actually a water pipe system throughout the entire gorge. And that was for not only to have you know clean water throughout the gorge, but also for uh, fire prevention. So taken very seriously, uh, to prevent any kind of fires. Right, and definitely part of that checking the website and the opening and closing the park is all about fire and weather. So you just make sure you keep an eye out for that. And of course, in the summer, fire fire warnings are going to be much higher. Um, also, there was, uh, for those of you who may not make it through the whole hike or are a little bit worried about your safety or get injured, there is a helicopter pad about halfway down the gorge. And also there is um, the official unofficial donkey rescue team (laughs) and we saw several times donkeys and horses being taken up and down the trail as uh, rescue and evacuation gear for people so if you need a donkey there's one available for you and you would hop on it Um, I don't know if hop is the right word but you would get on a donkey and be evacuated out so uh, there you go yeah and hey Click that subscribe button below if you if you haven't subscribed yet. We're up over 700 subscribers at this point, and we would love to have more uh, to uh, to share our story with. So please, right, if we click get to, subscribe. If, if we get to a thousand, we get to start making like a penny every three months. Three cents. <laughs> so thanks for subscribing. All right, uh, just a couple more things about the trail, and then we're going to tell you all about the logistics. So hang on, this is totally do your why. We're going to tell you how to save about 50 bucks a couple. So um, just a couple more things. Samira Town is one of the stops in the gorge, and that's what the gorge is named after. It was a village that was lived in for a very long time. It was also also a place that a lot of soldiers escaped to in the several wars that were happening, um, that have happened on the island of Crete. And in 1962, all the people were relocated. It'd be interesting to see what the locals use for that, the verb for that, but the, the remaining citizens that lived in Samaria were moved when the place was designated a UNESCO site and turned into a national park. Uh, The big highlight of the park is getting to the Iron Gates. Do we know why they're called the Iron Gates? 
Uh, we don't know why they're called the iron gates, but it is the narrowest part. It's, it's only, again, about three meters wide, and it is the highest uh, cliffs. It's incredibly dramatic. It is just beautiful, and the, with the water rushing through that, and, uh, you know, just, just a, a breathtaking uh, scene to be in the gorge at that point. Um, but uh, just before the Iron Gates, it actually was my favorite part, which was the, the ranger, I guess. <laughs> Uh, there were no yip yip hooray for rangers. Let's give it three cheers for rangers. <laughs> there were so there, we crossed the the creek or the gorge, the water a yeah. lot of times, crisscrossing back and forth. Someone and said each it was time, twenty nine times. Each time you've got to really watch your step and walk across the rocks because it's not there. There are a few bridges, but mostly it's just like tiptoeing across the rocks to get across and not falling in. Uh, at one point, that wasn't. Uh, as evident it's in how to get across. Right, the, and, the water was overflowing on the rocks. Yeah, yeah. so there was there was a ranger there, our barefoot, standing in the creek with a hard hat, <laughs> and he would lend a hand and, and hold his hand out, and he'd take your hand as he geared you, uh, uh, put you across. Um, so I, this guy was great, and I love the fact that you know he had a hard hat on, and I'm just like, hmm. And then we stopped right after we got across. We stopped to you know to eat an apple, and he kind of gave us this wave, like, no, you can't stop here. There, there's rocks, and that's why he's got a hard hat on. So I guess you know, imagine you know the park service saying, hey, you, hey, Bob, where, your job today is your job. Wear this hard hat and stand there and help people across. And oh, what happened to the last guy who did this? <laughs> <laughs> but we, we really like the signs. Uh, you see them all through the gorge. It says, uh, beware of falling rock. And the solution is to walk quickly. Walk quickly. <laughs> You're not allowed to stand or sit yeah. anywhere in, in the Greek text. And English. Yeah. Walk fast. Walk fast. So uh, they're actually at the very beginning of the gorge. There were there was like cages you had to walk through because of the, the falling rock was such a hazard. So anyway. So finally, we got to the end of the walk. Um, oh, and by the way, at Samira Gorge, uh, the town in, inside, there is a hospital or an office or first aid or something there. Now, when we were there, it wasn't um, staffed, but I'm sure it was probably staffed up to like October 1st. And the, the, the medical care is free. So if you need Band-Aids or you twisted an ankle or you need some medical care, it's supposedly free. And you have access to that when you get to Samira. Okay, we finally get to the end of the hike and we're like so hungry and we're tired and it was like the doors of heaven opened up and <laughs> there was a man selling yogurt with honey greek yogurt with greek honey yogurt. and this yo and you know you, i tell you i'm vegan but when it comes to homemade greek yogurt with fresh honey from the hive i'm gonna try it and it was it was certainly heavenly so that was our end of trail treat. Rather than a beer and a good olive bar, we had the fresh honey or fresh honey and fresh Greek yogurt. And the Greek yogurt was thick like mashed potatoes. It was delicious. So anyway, <laughs> then we walked, we got a, a local bus. We're gonna tell you about the, all the logistics in a second. Got to the little town of, uh, what is, Soya, Soya. No, right? that's no. not. And Aya. Aya Romali. Yeah, Aya Romali. We're trying really hard to pronounce Greek correctly. Really hard. We're looking all these words up and learning how to pronounce them. Anyway, we get there, it's a black sand beach. So we donned our bathing suits and went for a nice fresh water uh, higher swim Jump in the in beautiful the, in the ocean. Mediterranean and on the black sand, just absolutely gorgeous. And then uh, if we wanted, we could have grabbed a bite to eat, but we were full from our yogurt. And then we hopped on the ferry to get to the bus to get back. So that was our day hiking. Now let's tell you the details, exactly how you can do it yourself. So if you were to get a tour, which they're readily available everywhere, and all the tour does is put you on a bus and takes you to the start, that's it. That ride on the tour bus uh, for two is usually around 100, 70 to 100 bucks. So $35 or so at least per person. And all it is is a ride to the start. Right. So, and then you got to pay all these other things when you get there. So Steve figured out how to do it because he is the king of, <laughs> he's the king of logistics. He did, DIY yeah, he tours. did the Camino. He did the logistics for the Camino. You can see the link up there. If you want to hike the Camino, we got all the logistics for that. Yep. But go. Super easy. So in Hanya, uh, in the center of town, there's the regional bus station right in the center of town. And there's a little kiosk there and you go up and you say, I want to do the Samaria Gorge. And basically you pay for the public bus, which is seven euro a person, uh, one way and seven euro back. Uh, and the bus takes you to the start at the top of the gorge. 
uh, and the bus leaves at 7.45. There's some various times that it leaves. Um, and so the very, the start is in... Um, um, this is the word that we... we uh, Chiloscolo. Chilos 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 there we go. We're getting so good. Is the start <laughs> of, the, of the gorge. So the bus drops you off. There's a there's a, a nice uh, little restaurant there. And a bathroom. And bathrooms. And, and a uh, place to buy a jacket if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a jacket? Not oh, me! <laughs> 35 year old later. <laughs> and uh, if you have bought your tickets to the park, in advance, which we did, you can skip the line. A uh, good idea to do that because you want to check the park website before you buy tickets to make sure that they're going to be open the next day. Right. Uh, otherwise, you might get there and they, they're closed and that, that, would, that would be horrible. So anyways, um, so uh, start the hike and then at the end, the town that you get to, this uh, Aya Rumali, there's no roads to get there. It's a beach town uh, that the only way to get in and out is a ferry. So you have to get ferry tickets, and this is from the same place, from the same kiosk at the bus station. Take the ferry tickets to Suya, and Suya is another port city, and when you get off the ferry, the bus is waiting for you. So the tickets, the ferry tickets were 13 euro a piece. Right. And then you get to the bus, and there's a whole line of buses. It's all the tour buses and then the city bus. The city bus. <laughs> and you take the seven euro city bus again, again, you get, get those tickets in advance. And it uh, and it and it brings you back the uh, back to to Hania. Uh, the interesting thing is that the ferry is at five thirty in the evening, and even though we were done with the hike at about three thirty, um, four thirty. Well, <laughs> <laughs> four thirty. <laughs> um, the uh, it gave us time to relax, and there is no other uh, ferry, so we couldn't have taken an earlier ferry even if we wanted to. So everybody who's done the entire hike for the whole day is on this five thirty ferry, right. and then you take the uh, the ferry, which was a beautiful ride actually, yeah. about forty five minutes, uh, the ferry ride to Suya, and then when you get off that ferry again, your bus is waiting for you. You get on the bus, and they drive. It took about two and a half hours back to on the bus, Anya on, mm -hmm. on the bus and, and the ferry ride was about an hour yeah yeah about 45 minutes. okay so in conclusion so this is how you do it you you go the the, the the Hania bus terminal you buy a ticket to um the start of the hike which costs you seven euro you do the hike at the bottom of the hike there is a sh you can either hike you can continue hiking for another two kilometers or you can take a local little van that costs you two euro the, the road that you can that walk, that takes you to the ferry, it's cobblestone road. So if you don't you're done with cobblestone, you don't want to do that anymore, you take the bus. That's two euro. That's not included. You just you just pay someone two euro. Big no big deal. So seven seven euro for the bus, two euro for the second bus, you get to the ferry, you get on the ferry at 530 and you pay 13 euro for that. Then you get in to the next bus and you pay another seven euro for that. You can buy all those tickets individually at the individual sites, or you can get all those tickets except the two-euro bus ticket at the Kanya bus terminal all together at one price. Nice. And then in addition, you also need to pay five euro to get into the park. So all that combined for one person is 32 30. euro plus the two euro for the bus. So right. 34 euro each person times two for us, which is $68 for the two of us, or you can go to a tour company and you can give them what $70, 70 euro per person to just get you a ride to the tour and then right. you still have to buy the ferry tickets and you still have to buy right. the two euro bus and you still have to buy your admission into the park. So we hope that's helpful. We'll put all of the links in the description about the where you buy the bus passes, where you buy the ferry passes and where you buy the entrance into the park. And um, if you have any questions, them down below. Have you ever done this hike? What is your favorite hike? And do us a favor, if you subscribe, which you're going to because you love us so much, <laughs> please also make a comment and tell us what your favorite hike is because we want to do it. We're yeah. looking for hikes. Yeah. We're looking for good hikes. Anywhere. Anywhere. Anywhere in the world. I mean, it could even be the backyard hike, you know, in um, Red yeah. Rocks. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> tell us. Subscribe and tell us your favorite hike. Or if you've already subscribed, give us a comment of your favorite hike. Thank you so much. We love you guys. We're so glad we can share this information with you. Right? So glad. <laughs> and we'll see you next Sunday.